My name is Michelle, and this is my husband Rob, and we just got done with our first IVF cycle, well, the first birth cycle, mm -hmm. and we wanted to come on and give some tips about things I wish I would have known or done differently going through IVF. And I'll get your take on it too. But okay. the first thing, which, and this is the thing, there's a lot of, there's a lot of videos out there. You're about to laugh at me. <laughs> what am I doing now? I love it about, that's that SNL sketch, remember? <laughs> Do you remember that sketch? <laughs> there, was, about? there was a guy. Where is your brain right now? Because <laughs> <Come on. laughs> you made the joke about, and then there's a guy. He was, you put him, basically it's like, a, it's a gift idea for people who get bored at parties. And they, and it, you put a mask on your face and it's that a machine a, that goes, uh -huh, No, yes, that was yes. Tim and Eric. Oh, was that Tim and Eric? Tim and Eric. Why are you sketch. thinking of that right now? <laughs> oh my God. And going, In case you're yeah, wondering yeah, what he's laughing yes. about, go ahead and YouTube Tim and Eric party sleep mask. <laughs> and you'll know what's right. in his head. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> sorry, sorry, go ahead. Are you done? I watched a lot of videos before yeah. going through IVF just to see some tips and tricks, and there's a lot of videos out there, but there is some information that was not in those videos, mm -hmm. because if the information was on those videos, I wouldn't have made certain mistakes. Maybe. Right. Who knows? Right, right, right. So there's the, the basic things that people tell you to do before you get started with IVF is nutrition. Like you're not going to spend a whole bunch of money getting started on IVF if you're not living care or, yourself. Yeah, yeah, like supplements and your spouse to be on supplements too. Like it was hard to get you to take COQ10. I had to like pound you, like super nag, to get you to remind remind yeah. you. Yeah, uh, I, the problem is um, I'm used to taking pills sporadically, which is different than how you yeah. take the pills. He takes it like when he thinks he needs it. I take it like on a regimen. So make sure your partner is switching and, d and taking his stuff or, you know, if you're doing it single on your own, just make sure you're taking your stuff and get rid of toxic household products, mm -hmm. um, toxic products that you use, BPA plastics, and just try to live your overall best healthy self because yeah. you don't want to waste money and then you know, not be taking care of yourself beforehand, so at least three months. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, is that, which you knew I told you, which I heard mm -hmm. um, right off the bat, was everyone was saying to make sure that we, you got in right away. Basically, a lot. the one thing that I saw when, when we were looking up um, like advice and things like that mm -hmm. about it was a lot of people said, and even asking on forums, people said it takes, it can take a really long time, it can go slow, so make sure you get in right away. Mm -hmm. So when we had our TFMR scheduled for February 10th, we made the consult for March 4th, thinking, oh, no, no, yeah, no, no, we were thinking no, no. it was going to be like... We thought we'd have to wait like two months. Yeah, I thought I'd have to get, but it was yeah. really quick. So a lot of people say that it can take a while to get started or there could be a waiting list to get in. So yes, make the appointment as soon as you can, but then if they go too fast for you, make sure that you put the brakes on it because you do have to be ready to be cleared in your life and have space because it's like... Because it's like getting on a roller coaster. And once you're in there, you, you can't get off of it. Yeah. A lot of appointments, like yeah. insane appointments. Make sure you like your doctor. Mm -hmm. Make right. Good She's advice. great. We had a great doctor. Yeah, and, and if you don't like your doctor, if you don't get like a good feeling about your doctor, make sure you switch because you need you need to trust what they're doing. The doctor we had was a stellar doctor. Yeah, really and he doesn't great. normally like doctors. He's like very. I really don't like doctors. He liked her right away mm -hmm. to the point where I questioned the safety of our marriage. You're like, I love that doctor. She was just real, I just like her uh, upbeatness and she was real, she was laughing. No, she was nice. Jokes and she was real sweet. She was nice. And then also the clinic, um, make sure you check the reviews of the doctor and the clinic. But then the one thing I was going to say too, which you caught right away, which I didn't catch right, well no, I caught it. The but nurse. Was the nurse. So like we went into the back room when we were there and we were supposed to meet our nurse. This was a day during consult, and we had a phone call with her. And I know some a lot of people never meet their nurse anyway. Mm -hmm. So even if you're even if the nurse is like remote, a lot of people don't meet her. But we just got a bad, especially I got a you. bad vibe right away. Like yeah. he picked it up right away. He's like, I just her energy was off, and I kind of felt that way too. I thought she would be more warm because mm -hmm. like think about just meeting someone here. Let's do an impersonation. Oh, you, I'll be the nurse, yeah. and you be us. Like saying hello. Hi, how are you? Oh, oh wait, I'm me. <laughs> I'm <a bad> doctor. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, okay, wait, back to my, this was my idea, I'm messing it up. So Ready? you be us, I'll and be I'll us. be the nurse. All right, so, <clears throat> hi, how are you? I'm good, so listen, um, this is what you're gonna have to do, you're gonna have to sign this paperwork and this paperwork, and if you have any questions, call me, uh -huh. but you're gonna need to do this, 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 and this, this, and you need to write that down, this, you're gonna have to do this date, you're gonna have to call me on this date, and for your husband, he's gonna have to do this, blah, blah, blah. All right, any questions? Uh, yeah, uh, let me just write all that down. For, yeah, I asked her to repeat it, but that's how it was, it was like stone cold, and what we were expecting was... Mm. We were expecting like, oh hi, you know. My name is so and so. Is da, 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 da. Like normal, like a person. Yeah. Like a human being. You know? So if you get a bad vibe from your nurse, don't like switch out right away and like cancel her right away. But or him, I don't know. There might be guy nurses. Mm -hmm. But keep note because we got the bad vibe, and then during a couple of our, not so much him, but for me, like I had to get a saline sonogram. I had to report my cycle first. We didn't get a good vibe with. Her. I didn't get the good vibe. I didn't get with her. Continued because she was then always absent. She always forgot to tell me important information. So make sure if you don't like your nurse, you figure it out right away because that's something that like you can't switch you later can't on. Switch it's a lot harder to switch later on. Yeah, once you start the whole process, then they tell you you can't switch. So if you're in the beginning stages and it just doesn't seem right, just quick. get a new person. Yeah, well they, they told person. me I could switch, but I'd have to cancel my cycle and I have to start over. Well, who wants to do that? You know what I mean? If you have your heart, you know, heart set yeah. on doing it at that time, then you, you know what I'm saying? You can't do it differently. Yeah. I went onto my Facebook group that's specific to my state that has women going through IVF. Mm -hmm. And I asked the women who go to my clinic, I said, hey, um, does anyone know if our clinic has an after hours nurse? Because I didn't even think of this while going through the egg retrieval, but I just wanted to see before making this video. And a couple of them said, yeah, yeah, there's an after hours nurse. And I was like, if I would have known there was an after hours nurse, I would have been so You'd less be stressed. That person. Well, no, because when you're going through stints, you have so much more stress, especially wondering like, what if I have a question with my shot? What if this goes wrong? What if you have a question? So it, there's all this anxiety because every time you're stimming, it's at night most for most people, majority, like 99% of the time, and you can't call anyone at night, at least I thought. Mm -hmm. So if you're going through stims, ask your nurse but right off the bat, who do I call after hours? What's the number for an after hours nurse? Because that is information that would have made me feel so much more calm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And then, and you know what the most important thing is? The most important thing, yeah. and this is my biggest top advice, because mm -hmm. this almost got my, my cycle canceled, is during the process, you're not gonna have someone holding your hand and guiding you throughout everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought I would, and some clinics are better than others, and some clinics you'll actually will have somebody holding your hand and like guiding you and other clinics you won't. So the one thing I recommend doing, because this almost canceled my cycle, is as soon as your nurse calls you and says, are you ready to start your cycle for egg retrieval? And the minute you say yes, you don't let her get off the phone. You say, okay, so questions. What pharmacy am I using? How do I call them? What's their phone number? When is my medication gonna be ready? Mm -hmm. What is my prescription list? And what is my cycle calendar? And you ask all of that because my nurse gave me none of that information and my whole entire cycle got canceled. Oh God, I know. That's Almost crazy. got canceled. Yeah, the, the advocate lady she, I just me. don't know how you could be so bad at your job. Yeah, and she knew she was wrong. Mm -hmm. I, the reason I know, because this is, oh God, I didn't tell you this, mm -hmm. but Certain forums that you go on to, the women on there who are like true IVF, like like people who've been gone through it and they they really know what they're doing. Yeah. When I asked, when I went on there to complain about my nurse, a lot of them were like, "Oh, you shouldn't complain because that's just how they are. You have to be able to do this stuff on your own." Yeah. And I was sitting there with them, and I'm like, "Yeah, but like, how am I supposed to know this? This is my first time. Like, I don't like how am I supposed to know that someone's not going to tell me how to get my medication?" Some of them were on my side saying that your nurse should have told you. Your medication was ordered and gave you that info that's her job that's There's her job no, no doubt about it some of them were saying well ivf is very hands-on you have to do things yourself and i was like i know i have to do things myself but i wasn't even i was waiting for the moment they were going to explain the medication process to me mm -hmm. and also i could never call my nurse because she was always absent so i could never but call her to get questions did answers. she at least email you the information See, ahead of time? oh that's another thing you know how when we got started, they told us everything would be on our portal? Yeah. That little app. So yeah. everything was going to be on an app. Everything was going to be on the app. 
she always said everything you get will be on the app. She never told me any documents would be going to my email. So what happened is our clinic emailed at me that the medications were ready, but I wasn't looking at my email for anything. And it's from this really obscure like RX team and she never mentioned anything about it. Mm -hmm. So this time going into my transfer cycle, which hasn't started yet, as soon as she put the order in, she messaged me on the portal to say, you can order your medicine, blah, blah, blah. So this time she did it right, but this time I didn't need her to. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So the point is, is that you never know with your clinic or with your nurse or whatever, how your nurse is gonna handle you or how your nurse is gonna handle the process. Mm -hmm. So you wanna be on top of the ball for everything. Mm -hmm. Meaning like you ask all the important questions beforehand, you write everything down. And the most important thing, that information that you need before egg retrieval is your pharmacy information. Also, if there's any videos for you to watch to explain like the process. If you don't have those videos, you're screwed. So ask again for the name of the pharmacy, how you order it, the number of the pharmacy, your prescription list, because you want to double check the meds. Also on top of the prescription list, the videos on how to inject it, and then also when you're supposed to order it. Yeah. You say something? No, I was gonna say like, <clears throat> with the medical field, my experience has been that doctors don't normally have that human touch. But our doctor, does have it, which is rare. Oh, you mean the IVF doctor? Yeah. Right, our IVF doctor. Yeah. But in, as far as the nurse and whatnot, like maybe that's just how it's more clinical. It's more like well, no, because remember the, number. the the substitute nurses, like the one who called for when um I had to do my trigger shot. She was so sweet. She was like a light and day. She was like sunshine. Remember? Yeah, yeah. You know, she was. See, yeah. that's 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 all. It's not a lot, a lot to ask for. Just right? to be in a good mood when you talk yeah. to me. <laughs> Yeah. Like, think about it. You're going to be hormonal, on medication, you're going to be stressed. You don't need someone who's going to be like... And someone who, who you can tell, like, cares likes their job. and yeah. wants to do a good job, not wants to, like, help you. Yeah. Make sure you just handle all the information on your own. Everything on your own. Like, be mm -hmm. on top of it. Um, so, from my perspective, before you get started, make sure your nutrition's right. Make sure that you're prepared for either a long wait, because sometimes it can take a long while, or to advocate for yourself if it's gonna go too fast. And then the other thing is make sure you like your doctor or clinic, yeah. make sure you like your nurse where you get stuck with her, and make sure you advocate for yourself and ask the right questions at the right time. Yeah. And what about for me, what are your words of wisdom from what you went through with the? My words of wisdom would be <laughs> to, uh, Try not to get down about the whole thing. Yeah. Because your wife needs you to be like yes. positive. Yes. Because I was feeling down just having to do this. I was like, why do we even have to do this? It sucks that we have to do this. You know what I mean? And and uh, and then I had to stick her with these needles oh, and just like, who wants to do that? So at the pro and the process is like try to make it fun for her, try to make it positive experience and stuff. Get her Chick-fil-A. Yeah. So they say they give you these videos these instructional videos which are supposed to teach you how to to um take the medicine from the powder mix it mix it and then you take it with a syringe and then you put the injection needle on and there's a whole process to it you you'll just get the hang of it after the first or second time it's like all it takes and you'll just snap right into it but um so just um just remember like even the doing it is different than actually just watching it just like anything in life guys, don't get too stressed about the medication like i'm from this way i learned from researching it when i was stressed they put like a little bit extra in some of those bottles so if you like have it's like a precaution for error mm -hmm. so if you can't get all the center tied out and there's like a drop don't worry because they put they have like a buffer zone so that you can mess up a bit you know yeah uh, so don't worry too much about it when you're sticking the needle in just make sure it's all in there before you take it out. That's all, but that's yeah. that's some common sense stuff. So. Yeah, the, I feel like with the shots, it it kind of goes per person, you know, like, you know, mm -hmm. you'll figure it out. But the main thing is to try to stay calm. Also, I forgot to say, don't compare yourself to other people, like throughout the journey, because everybody's oh, different. That's right. yeah. Everybody's body goes differently. And yeah. you have to understand that your first cycle, your doctor is trying to figure out what works for you. So either you're, you'll be lucky and your cycle will go great. 
you have good results, but if it doesn't, your doctor will then take that information and, you know, mm -hmm. manage it to make it work for you. You just have to kind of trust the process and not be stressed, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like the gym, you know? I used this analogy before, but... Well, yeah, some people respond to working out better than others. Kind I of like, you mean no pain, no gains? No, I just mean, like, don't j compare yourselves to other people like that. That's oh, yeah, that's, that makes don't sense. Don't compare yourselves and your gains in gym, like if, let's say, you're working out, just as an example. Don't compare yourself to this other person because you are your individual and... You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. just because they got 36 eggs and... That, that, that's what I was going to say, too. Sometimes know? people, you'll, like, with me, I was... Like thinking, like, why do all these women get all these crazy amount of eggs? And mm -hmm. I'm not, and I'm not like it's nothing wrong with me. But everybody reacts differently. There's some women who will get like 50 eggs and only get one embryo. There's some women who will then get only four eggs and get four embryos. It's really just completely up in the air, you know. Mm -hmm. The age, the statistics. That's what we should mention too. Is that you look online about all these statistics about how age correlates with the number of eggs and da da da. Like you can get too caught up in that, I think, because statistically, you can be an outlier like we were. And uh, mm -hmm. we happen to be older, comparatively, hey. to other people. <laughs> and yet, we did pretty well. <laughs> so, forget about statistics, statistics, statistics sometimes. Statistics. statistics. Don't, but that's the thing, don't worry too much about the number game. Just try, because you can't control it anyway, that's what I began to realize. So why worry about it? It's easier. Do what you can do to control it, which is your health and your mind. Get good sleep. Get good sleep, take your supplements. And I was going to say this because I talked to a lot of people on Reddit. But then go through being on Reddit since all this happened, I've gotten asked if it was, if you were mentally okay going, I mean, going from the TFMR and the baby loss to IVF. Mm. And I tell them all the same thing. I think it was the best. And I knew that right away. As soon as we had to go through the, the TFMR, I even said to you, even if it doesn't work and we have no luck, it's a it's a mental, it's like a distraction and it's something different and it's something to take me off of like all the depressing stuff I just went through. It's mm -hmm. like more of a hopeful thing than just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So for me, after pregnancy loss, going right into IVF was like, just for my mental, my mental state. But I like I told, you that if we get pregnant hopefully with the transfer i'm 100 percent going to do therapy during pregnancy and i think you should too what if there's no heartbeat what if there's this and you're like no because you were instinctually you felt something was wrong yeah but wrong with i might just pregnancy. i might just still be that upset anyway just because of like ptsd no but it's not good to be though which is you why have to be therapy you have to be Stress free and feeling good, and this is when this is when you see like people on YouTube go, and that brings us to our sponsor. <laughs> that, and that brings us to oh, our do sponsor. better health. No, I'm just being honest. I don't think I would do online therapy. I would want to like do it on, in person. I think. Uh yeah, in person is always better. Yeah. So no, I'm not. This is not sponsored for therapy. This is just. <laughs> I always see that. I always see that sponsor where we're like, um, yeah, and you know, I have a lot of problems and I get sad sometimes, which is why today's sponsor is really? <laughs> yeah. uh, yes. that better out. That's funny. Maybe they they market that towards women or something. I don't see that. So. No, Mr. Ballin, after I don't watch with Mr. Ballin, he always is. Almost well, his audience is girls, so. No, I don't like Mr. Ballin. <laughs> I think it just goes by like the algorithm. Maybe. All of my stuff is like true crime on my YouTube. True crime is another girl thing. It's a girl I wonder, phenomenon. what are the studies on listening to true crime when you're pregnant? Like if I get pregnant, am I still allowed to like listen to true crime or is my baby going to be a psychopath? That's probably a good, that's a good question. Why don't we just test it? Let's no! What? <laughs> what? I, want, I can't what? not listen to true crime, it's relaxing to me. It's relaxing. I don't know why. Like? There's something wrong with me. I don't know. It's like problem solving. Like in my head, I think I'm a detective and I'm going to solve it. Oh, I get what you're saying. Well, maybe in that way it's not too bad, but I don't, I have no interest in solving any crimes. So, so to started, me, it's just, I'd rather try to get accomplish other things. Do you remember when I had you watch when we first got married and we lived in the apartment? Mm. Deadly women. 
Oh yeah, Deadly Women. What a great thing that for your new husband oh, to watch. Yeah. We, I would sit there obsessively watching Deadly Women, like yeah. women who murdered their husbands. Yeah. Did he think I was gonna kill you? No, I just, I just knew there's a lot of messed up women out there. That's well, gotta I mean, be careful. See, no, the thing is, is that there's a lot of messed up men who like murder people all the time. But when you hear about a woman who does it, it's just more a little bit shocking. Well, I remember that one story, especially which is real evil. This remember that woman who uh, was poisoning her husband. Like little by little, like oh yeah, get, putting stuff in his in his uh, yeah, food or, yeah. or his drink, okay. morning coffee or whatever it was. Yeah. Well, stop looking at me like that. <laughs> That's why I don't drink coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the poor guy just eventually he she was there pretending like oh you're sick here let me take care of you and she kept poisoning him. He was in the, you know in, that, the in his uh, deathbed. Do you know? He actually died. That happened recently. Who did that? But I don't think she, I don't, I didn't watch the whole case yet, but a woman was trying to poison her husband mm -hmm. in his coffee and he caught her on camera. Oh, I think you remember you telling me that. Yeah. yeah. See, that's evil stuff right there. Yeah, see, that's why you have to know where the cameras are. I'm just kidding. Oh I would never do anything like that. Make sure that you advocate for yourself and what you want to do. Um, because like, for example, when my doctor called me, and <laughs> my doctor called me about it with our PGT results. Mm -hmm. She asked me, um, well, she went over the natural and the medicated cycle again, mm -hmm. which she did before, but you know, she probably goes over with everybody. And I said, no, 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 you don't have to explain it. I already want to do the natural cycle, which is what she would want to do. But because we're going through insurance, you would have to have your insurance approve it first before you get started so she said do you want to go on birth control and then wait and i was like no 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 birth control only because my body's never been on birth control i don't want to mess up my hormones trying to do like a natural cycle plus my hormones have been a hot mess since like last september when i was pregnant <laughs> think about it so i just don't want to do that mm -hmm. but just make sure you advocate yourself and if you do have the ability and this is just my personal recommendation if you do have the ability to do a natural cycle and if you ovulate regularly, I highly recommend it because it takes advantage of your corpus luteum, mm -hmm. which you naturally have during pregnancy. So for example, when you ovulate, your, your egg goes Pip! and that follicle turns into a corpus luteum, which supplies progesterone and all the hormones to the baby through pregnancy. And it's also responsible for, what's that thing that the relaxin hormone? Mm -hmm. And it's- Which helps sure. Hips Obviously get wider and stuff, which is good for childbirth. Yeah, so I mean, if you can't do a natural cycle, then that's 100% understandable. But I'm just saying, if you can, but you don't want to because you don't want to like have a little weight, I would highly recommend it. Um, because what will happen here is that what my nurse described is after I get my period, I report the first day of my period, I come in for blood work. Then once I get closer to like cycle day 10, I go in more regularly for blood work with ultrasound monitoring and then once they see that I'm closer to ovulating they give me a trigger shot to have me ovulate mm -hmm. that way they can time it yada yada so there's more monitoring and stuff like that but I think it's worth it but I'm just saying if you aren't doing a fresh transfer and you're can you ovulate regularly and is it something that you can do consider it because Mm -hmm. after you're on all those medications you don't really want to be stuck on plus the, the progesterone needles scare me Mm. Those women are like my superheroes. I tell them that on Reddit all the time when I talk to them. Like you guys are like another type of breed that I am not. Right. Those they give themselves those not those oh, they shoot injections. Of that big remember that big needle Damn. right in your butt. Yeah. That's like a, that's like the top tier of a female. Like which she can you know. That's a, that's a tough tough one. Yeah. I can't tough do girl. that. Could you stab yourself in the butt with that needle? Yes. Really. If I want, if I needed to, if I wanted to. I guess I'm just weak. No, you're not. I couldn't stab myself. No, you're not. Uh, I have a phobia of needles. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Mm -hmm. And I will see you guys soon because we're about to start our transfer cycle very shortly. See you later. Yeah, hopefully enjoy. we enjoy. Hopefully we get Memorial Day weekend. Oh yeah, well, and if you're not in America, just enjoy your weekend. And enjoy your weekend. And if I post this after Memorial Day weekend, then I hope you had a great weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be after Memorial Day weekend. It's gonna weekend. be after Memorial Day weekend by the time I post it. Yeah. Anyway, bye guys! Bye! Have a good one. He wants pizza. Wait, hey. your head is so much bigger than mine. Look at that. Hey, it's not just me who wants pizza.
You want pizza also. I'm not going to admit that I want pizza. <laughs> Well, don't put it all on I me. have to do it mentally. I have to act like it's you, and then I'm like the victim. Oh, that, is that what you do? You've done that before, also. What? You put it all on me, like, oh, he wants this, I'm oh, sorry. Okay, then it's not me, I don't feel so bad. Now I know what you then do. Then I'm just, I'm just, what do you call it? Subject to your decisions. So it's not my decision, I just follow the leader. I see your trick. It works. <laughs>